Well, like anything, you gotta do maintenance on your motor, right? So today I noticed that there was something going on with my silencer. This little piece popped up. So I drilled out the old rivets and now I'm going to use a rivet gun and fix it. I didn't know if you guys knew how easy it was to rivet something. This is the rivet gun that I got from, I think it was Harbor Freight. Wasn't but maybe, I don't know, 10 bucks. Uh, I got different size rivets. And I'm gonna make sure that the rivets that I have, that I'm gonna use are the right size because I have different sizes. Let's go for a smaller size. All right, so this is the size I selected. It fits in the hole. All right, let's see if I can do it with one hand. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm going to go one time and then I'm going to crimp again. And then it pops off like so. Then you eject that part. So that is riveted in. So there's number one. Let's go ahead and grab Grab a rivet and put the rivet gun like so. I'm going to squeeze it twice. All right, so I'm going to squeeze it once. It pulls the rivet in. I'm going to squeeze it again to pop the rivet off. And there we go. That's how you rivet something. All right, so now we are going to put this back on because it's always nice to be able to fix things. Well, hello everyone. I'm an alcoholic. I live in Arkansas and I love Arkansas. This is my roots. I'm rocking my roots. Matter of fact, I'm rocking my roots over here by Pinnacle Mountain. Gonna take the paramotor up and go fly around. So today I'm gonna teach you how I fly. Disclaimer, I'm not teaching you how to fly. I'm teaching you how I fly. Does that make sense? Don't try this without proper instruction. This is my paramotor. This is an Angel paramotor. I got it strapped down. $39 little carrier. Um, and we are going to take a look to see. I mean, look at this. This is a beautiful, beautiful park. No one around. Don't have to worry about anything out here. The winds are really nice and light. Uh, no clouds in the sky and it looks like from now until the end of the day we're gonna have less than nine mile an hour winds and no gusts so it's gonna be a beautiful day the first thing I do is I put up a window meter I need to find out which way the wind is going is it steady is it shifty is it changing I look at the trees I look at the leaves on the trees Look at the tops of the trees. I just basically look at everything. Do I see any birds circling around up there? It could be a thermal. I'll stay out here for about 15 minutes before I fly and just check the wind. On each side of the wing, there's Velcro. Right, you can see all the junk that has accumulated in your wing. So you can take this and make sure that all the grass and everything that's in there could be bugs, could be grass. I've even had rocks come out of these things. I have no idea where the rocks came from. Kind of part of your, your wing maintenance. To make sure that your wing's butthole is cleared. Make sure the butthole is clean. How to pre-flight? Well, on my particular frame, I make sure that all of my Velcro is as tight as it possibly can be. And I've already done this at home. So I'm just basically showing y'all what I've already done. Make sure that uh, these are nice and tight too because that's what holds the comfort bars in. So these are nice and tight, nothing's ripped. 
make sure that my throttle is good. Nothing's wrong with my throttle. And when you press the throttle in, everything moves freely and it locks. Before I left, I also took off these bolts and I looked inside, made sure everything was good, scraped off the carbon. Routine maintenance on this. Always make sure that this is nice and clean. And of course my little hole right there is nice and clean. Everything runs perfect all the time. Made sure the um, hole was good. I already went through, made sure that there's no cracks in the fuel line. I've already re-tightened up all these to make sure that's good. Checked the belt, made sure that nothing is uh, broken. Actually, there was something that was broken. This right here, the rivets came out, so I put two new rivets in there and tightened everything down and made sure that was good. Also, make sure that this thing is zip tied to here because the Drazi, especially on the old classics, this thing right here, the air intake would swing out this way and get caught in the prop. Also, going around the prop, too, we're making sure that there's no cracks and everything is nice. I got a new prop. This has been repaired a couple of times and this thing works amazing. Also make sure that everything is tightened and I go through and make sure that all the bolts everywhere are tight. I actually go through and actually tighten, but uh, everything is nice and tight. So I don't have to worry about that. My gas can is down here and it's full and the cap is on tight. That is pretty much my entire pre-flight. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start this up and let it run for a minute. So let's go ahead and clear prop. The wind keeps shifting. So I'm keeping an eye on that. So I moved my wing over there and I moved the window meter over there. Also, I think that maybe I have some rotor, mechanical rotor over these vehicles. So I'm trying to get it out where I can see it and kind of more out in the open. Now I've been here for a while and I'm still checking out this breeze, still checking out the, the wind. I don't need to get up in the air and wish that I was down on the ground. I'd rather be down on the ground and wish I was up in the air. All right, I got my helmet, um, my chest cam, jacket, and this right here is a bicycle thing that I keep my phone in. I also keep uh, a wing bag in there, a small wing bag, just in case I go down someplace, I can pack up the wing. The wind did a complete 180. I see birds riding thermals. Real close. I know you're probably wondering, it's like, this is not flying, but it really is. This is like the most crucial part of flying. Anybody can get up in the air and pull brake and turn right and left. Anybody can do that. It's relatively simple. But when you have thermals and you have wind that whips around, when you're up in the air and that happens, you're coming crashing to the ground. And I knew that was coming because we got those birds riding that thermal up there. So I know that we got some wind that's gonna be whipping around. I truly, truly, truly believe that reading the wind, reading the weather, your micro meteorology is the most important most crucial thing about paramotors. Secondly, maintenance and upkeep of your paramotor. Very important. And of course, understanding how to pre-flight and maintain your engine. So there are a couple apps that I use pretty regularly to check the wind, especially the winds aloft. And this one right here is called Ventu Sky. And I'm able to see at different levels which way the wind is going, how fast they're going, and it seems to be quite easy to see what's going on. And then I also use Windy. 
And Wendy is usually the first one, the first app that people use when they're trying to check out the winds. So I've checked Ventu Sky and Windy, and it seems like the wind is going to be good, as long as I get rid of all these thermals around here. And of course, I also use my Compass app because I can see exactly which way the wind is coming, and this makes it quite easy. So I moved the wing over here, because I think that'd be a better launching spot. Really short run. And it's 4.30. Well, let's see if I can buckle in and see if the wind stays this way. Okay, I am going to walk you through what I'm doing so you can see what's going on. I am now making sure that my streets are straight. I pull my brakes and make sure I am clear to pulley. And now I'm going to make sure that the motor runs up to full speed. This particular model, this is the Vitarazzi Moster 185 Classic. The max is 8300 RPM. And it goes up to 8300 RPM. I'm looking back to check to make sure the wind is still straight. And it's kind of twitchy. I know that there's some thermals. I'm reaching down right now, grabbing the A's with my thumbs. And I know this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting. I'm going to have to continue to figure out which way the wind is coming because I'm gonna be doing a little dance here. So I go forward, I'm checking to see where the wing is and I'm staying underneath of it and it wants to go around just a little bit so I'm following it and then I finally get up in the air. That was tricky. Wouldn't do that on my very first flight. This motor torques to the right, so I'm letting myself continue to go to the right until I gain some altitude. And as you can see, I'm bouncing around because right now there are a lot of thermals, but they're dying down. Nothing that I haven't done before. My bump tolerance is not too bad. Nice. It's pretty high. All the times that I've done this, I've never had a collapse on Jeff Goins' bump tolerance. This is about a two to a three. It's not that bad because I've never had a collapse. Because the winds are turbulent like this, a little bit, it's definitely not butter smooth. I make sure that my trims are all the way in and I stow the brakes and I use tip steering only when I fly. Now when it gets bumpy, I grab the brakes and I give it a little bit of pressure on both sides so I can feel what's going on with the wind. Kind of active flying, especially down low like this. I, I'm getting a lot of turbulence, a lot of rotor off these hills. Every single time that I fly around here and I go by Pinnacle Mountain, I always encounter turbulence. No matter what time of the day, if it's butter smooth, no matter what the apps say, I always encounter a ton of turbulence, which is probably all the rotor that I'm getting off of all these different mountains. So down there, that's Pinnacle Mountain's main entrance where a lot of people usually go. And this is busy all the time. So to actually look down here and see nothing, nothing at all, is insane. So I'm going to let you watch this. I am heading back and I want you to just look. I'm trying to go as straight as I can and I am being whipped around. So just go ahead and watch this and see what you think about this.
it is really hard to tell in these videos what's actually happening. In my Skyfly High, I am being lifted at, at 12 feet a second, and I'm dropping uh, 12 feet a second. So I got some serious lift and down drafts that I'm going through. My wing, I should show you, it is moving left and right, forward and back. But once again, there's no collapses, so I'm okay. But after this, I'm heading back. I'm going to land and uh, wait a little bit longer. Maybe so it kind of calms down. This is like riding a roller coaster. And, you know, unlike a roller coaster, if, if the wing collapses, we're in for a hell of a drop. All right, so now I am coming in for a landing. And that's me. You can hear my phone. I had alarm going. I don't know why, but I had alarm going. So what I'm doing is I'm coming in. I'm trying to stay straight into the wind. And I cut my motor. And now I'm looking at the horizon, flaring, and now I'm walking. Easy peasy. Best landings are when you look at the horizon. This is a great motor because as soon as I turn around like this, because this is an angel frame, all I have to do is sit down and it's like I'm in a lawn chair. Love it. Airplanes everywhere. All right, so we're gonna try this again. Uh, landed for a while. <clears throat> Try to warm up my hands because my hands got cold. <sighs> it got bumpy up there. So I thought, eh, I'll land. I'll wait till it got closer to sunset. So now it's almost six o'clock. We got a pretty nice constant breeze. Nothing too horrible. Everything's died down a little bit. So hopefully I'll be able to take off here and fly around for an hour. So, brakes, clear to pulley, very important, clear to pulley. Bring my thumbs down underneath, grab the A's, pull them back. This is where ground handling is very important, because as soon as you go forward, and you gotta run, you gotta run hard, run, 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 run. Get underneath the, uh, the wing, go full throttle, and watch right as I Start taking off, I pull the brakes to give me some lift. Pull the brakes, gave me some lift. Put my hands back up, let her fly. And once again, because it torques to the right, I just climb to the right. And this is, a, like I said, a Monster 185 Classic. Has a lot of thrust. As I am climbing, I'm climbing almost at 10 feet a second. So this thing has an incredible thrust. I'm 250 pounds. My motor is about 50, 55, maybe 60 with gas. My wing's a 28 meter Ozone Roadster 3. To give you an idea of how quickly we just climbed, that mountain right there is about 800 feet AGL above ground level. We got about an hour until sunset. Got my lights on, but I only got about 40 minutes.
And there's Pinnacle Mountain. at my feet hey I am I am live cool looking at my feet it makes it to where you can't judge you can't judge the ground and I'd bust my ass every time so I think I'm done for the day look how close I am to my car did that really well Perfect three point landing. <sighs> All right. Yeah, I know what I was doing before when I was busting my ass on my landings. I was definitely not looking at the horizon. And that, that I was looking at my feet. So, looking at my feet. Hey, I am, I am live. Cool. Looking at my feet, it makes it to where you can't judge, can't judge the ground. And I'd bust my ass every time. So I think I'm done for the day. Look how close I am to my car. 
did that really well. Who do I have? Oh, Travis, what's up, man? So that's how you fly. You make sure the wind and the weather is perfect. Everything else is easy peasy. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the video today. Make sure that you check out Arcaholic and rock your roots. What are you doing? You know how to stay inside. Bad dog.